Good morning, everyone. Sorry for that delay in our webinar today. Uh, before I start, let me just check the sound in fact because I think the sound settings are not optimal as yet. It seems like I cannot. Is the sound okay at this moment? One second, folks. The software is uh, giving a hard time. Okay. Seems that I now have the normal microphone. Should be better, right? No. Alrighty. Cool. So let's get starting. One second. Let me. Sorry for that delay. Once again, let me put this slideshow on large and let's go through it before we take a look at the starts. Today, the, the, before we take a look at the start of the uh, I mean the Forex charts and the uh, price action, today the focus is on strategy and as always of course we have this, these disclaimers to show to you. First of all, the fact that this webinar is intended for a global audience and it may not be suitable for everyone in here. To find out if it is, please visit AdamoMarkersGlobal.com select your country of residence and contact an appropriate entity. Also please be aware of the fact that trading for exchange in uh, for exchange in my financial markets and products is considered high risk and it may not be suitable for all traders and investors. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. This webinar is not advice and is for informational and educational purposes only. And by continuing watching this webinar you agree with the disclaimer mentioned here and you can always request a copy by going to AdamMarketsGlobal.com and contacting your appropriate entity. Alrighty, thank you for your attention. We're going to take a look today at various strategies using a FIP strategy, moving average strategy, pivot point strategy. So trend lines depends on how much we can incorporate in, in the time we have. Let's see. With that said, let's take a look first of all at the risk calendar and of course that we want to take a look at what kind of risks there are involved today. Here we go. We have probably the, if I remember correctly, the CAD interest rate today at ADP USD uh, news. Tomorrow we have Euro and Pound interest rate. And Friday, of course, we have unemployment claims and NFP 40 US. There seems to be a bit of a slow, okay, there it is. What else do we have? Services PMI today and ADP indeed and indeed the CAD interest rate plus dollar PMI. And the Bank of Canada governor speaking as well. So all that is lined up for today. Let's take a look at our charts now. Alrighty. Looking at the euro dollar, yesterday we had a good fall. As expected regarding the wave analysis, yesterday was a wave uh, webinar and I was saying here this is good for probably an immediate fall right here right now. And uh, that indeed happened, 124.50, boom, all the way down to 123.70. Um, so we can see that um, we had a good continuation of this downtrend. The fall, although looking spectacular on a lower time frame, still is not all too big as yet if you look at the bigger time frames. So there could be more space for further downside. The technology seems not to be on our side today as everything seems to be going a bit slow. But uh, okay, finally we have the one hour chart. So further downside is possible, uh, but we're right at the bottom at this moment. So we have to see what kind of bounce we get at this bottom, if it's shallow or, or deep, that's the question. But ultimately, I would expect price to get to, to lower ground, to this minus 272 target at 1 at 22.50. Right, so yesterday there was actually a four hour breakout setup uh, on a four hour chart yesterday here at this level here, right, when we had a candle close below the band. So anyone who took that trade is in a, in a swing trade, for instance, to the downside. Now today, we don't have any swing trades. All we could probably perhaps do is, is potentially scale in to which trade on the euro dollar. That's, that's it. From the higher time frames, price is moving away from those moving averages. 
on the daily chart too. So the only thing we could really do is look for uh, basically bounces or breakouts. Breakouts could be, for instance, here where L3 gets broken. So that's one of the scale-ins that one can look at. Price hitting the L3 and then moving down to L5, for instance, 122.80. So that's a breakout trade I will keep, in my, eye on, uh, keep my eye on. When looking at Camarilla and um, moving averages, I think that this is a good with the trend breakout. So price does to make a bit of a fall down to L3. About 20 pips and we'll have reached L3. Preferably see a bounce at L3. Wait, I don't have my drawing to open as yet. One second. Preferably see a bounce at L3 and then the next break. Like this. Boom. Boom. Doesn't have to be a big bounce. A fractal is enough. And then that. So that's the euro dollar. Until we get to 122.50, uh, I don't think I, I don't see any serious support levels. There will be, of course, support and bounces along the way, but until we get to 122.50, I, you know, when we look at the longer term picture, that would be the first area where we could expect maybe uh, more difficulties. It could go even lower. It could go all the way to 121.50, 122, 120, 50, 121. So there is a lot of potential there before we hit a bigger monthly and weekly support levels. So the euro dollar looks good for downside. Let's take a look at the pound dollar. We're looking at the Camarilla and uh, moving averages. You see prices H3 and L3 are pretty close by. This is a, a lot of ups and downs, pretty choppy in general, as you can see on the hourly chart. So knowing the pound dollar, I would be a bit cautious with this one today. Um, it is in a downtrend, however, so there could be a downtrend continuation here to a breakout. Might, uh, might work, prove to be very well, but I would probably want to look for a breakout later in the morning, later London morning, that is to say, because otherwise, you know, the pound dollar always has that spiky nature, especially before or, or during, at the beginning of the session. From a, from a, um, Long-term point of view, swing trade point of view, here we had a four-hour candle below the band. That could have been a swing trade entry. Daily chart, if we zoom into price action, you can see that that was a good signal here, that bearish candle right in the band, and we did get follow through. Only two days ago was a pretty bullish day, so it's a bit, it's not, it's a pretty strong candle, I don't know, it's, it's not that, uh, doesn't look that great as the euro dollar because of this particular upset, I would say. Doesn't mean, though, that price cannot continue lower. It's just that now it's a bit difficult to trade, I would say, with regard to um, the fact that it's always a bit of a shaky start. But eventually, if price does push through L3, L5 will be the target. I do think it's a good breakout as well. Now the upside, I would ignore. I wouldn't trade it to the upside, even if price goes through H3. But a short from H4, H5 could make sense as well. Let's take a look at the Aussie. The Aussie has been very bearish, falling and breaking con continuously, in fact. This one is also at a spot where price is basically pretty far from the moving averages, below the L3 as we speak. Kind of making a, a small little uh, bear flag here. So we have a drop, sideways move. Hardly noticeable on the four hour. On the one hour chart, we can see that a bit, that pattern. And on the 30 minute chart, too. <clears throat> so in fact, this could be already a continuation spot. For, for downside, but let me just review one thing because the stop loss would have to be not above the most closest uh, high here, not on this 30 minute because that would be too risky, would have to be above the H3. 
which is already a sizable quantity for the RDUSD. So maybe that's a bit uh, on the high side. In that regard, waiting for some pullback, if it, if it does happen, could be better. If it doesn't happen, of course, then it's tough luck, but uh, the reward to risk is, is maybe not the, the best of things here. We take a look at the downside target. Burn entry right here. It's still almost one to one, potential at least. Yeah, it's a, it could be even worth a short right in here, in fact. Let's take a look if there's anything better before, uh, you know, sometimes if you start too early, you want to scan uh, more things before um, taking a trade. But I still like probably the euro dollar a bit more. But let's take a look at the euro odd. Maybe we can see how the euro and odd are shaping up together. Euro pushing up the moment. Bit of divergence between these tops. Bit funky choppy continuation on this hourly chart. Slow choppy. So it is moving up. Euro is a bit dominating, but it's oh so marginal and it's kind of making a rising wedge pattern with that versus on the four hour chart. So yes, the euro is a bit strong at this moment, but they're all over, all in all, they're quite imbalanced in fact, with quite a lot of spikes up and down and out a slow choppy move. <clears throat> so, but yes, the euro is dominating a bit. So this still could continue I'll, I'll bite with you know choppiness, so perhaps the Aussie is is is, is not that uh, much worse than the euro. In fact, let me take a look at uh, one hour chart one more time. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if this is if this is weakness and we fail. We don't break this top with that divergence on the hour and four hour. Last four hour candle was a a wick here. This looks like a weakness, a lower high. To be honest, we don't have the confirmation as yet, but we already broke the candle low of the previous candle. This does not look like a big strength as as yet, although eventually here we also did push up, but we didn't have divergence at that point. So in this regard, I think the, it makes sense that the euro is better than the Aussie. Despite the fact that price is moving up, I think that this could be potentially a reversal spot here. Something like that.
Hi there. Yeah, the sound happened. This is a techno technology disaster today. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, for those that bear with me, thank you so much. I hope the technology would not go against us again. Do you hear me now? Okay. Good. So I'm not sure how much you missed <clears throat> because I only realized that after a while, I guess. But uh, I was talking about the euro odd and the fact that I think it's in a potential reversal spot and that it's not necessarily something we have to trade, but it could be useful in deciding whether to short the euro or the Aussie. That's, I hope you still caught that part. I'm not all too sure. But uh, I was just about to say that um, I quickly wanted to make a summary of these first three pairs and then take a look at new pairs and answer your questions. So the euro dollar is in a, in, a, in a bearish downtrend, looking for the euro dollar to continue lower, breakout below L3 would be great, below 123.50, down to 122.80, down to 122.50, from L3 to L4, looking for first a bounce at L3 and then a break through it. Still on the early side though at this moment, still waiting and seeing, not choosing any uh, entry right here because of the early morning, and rather wait and see. Pound dollar could be a breakout too below L3 or perhaps from higher as well from H4 or H5, like the euro dollar a bit more at this point. And then the Aussie also looks bearish, but if I look at the euro odd, then the Aussie downside could be questionable. I mean, the Aussie is showing some reversal signs against the euro to the downside, euro odd to the downside. So perhaps the Aussie would not be as weak as the euro. But we could take a look at other Aussies to see how that shapes up. We could take a look at the pound odd as well. Pound dot two is kind of facing this resistance spot. Now price is definitely moving up fast to it. So that's not a good longing area. It's, it's definitely a spot where you could see some uh, retracement from that. So yeah, that, that says, says the same thing. In fact, the Aussie could have some uh, reversal strength here against the pound two. So that's something to be aware of. Is there bullish divergence on the euro dollar four hour chart? No, just in general. Is there a bullish divergence on AO for euro dollar? Bullish divergence. Uh, not yet, because as far as I can see, for our chart, in fact, is, let me get rid of everything here. There we go. For our chart is looking still pretty strong in the AO here. This is the most recent bottom AO price here. And if you look at the subsequent bottom, then we really didn't have a lower low comparing these two. Let's take a look at those. Here actually we had a bottom. Here we have a higher low right there and here too. So it's actually confirming it. They're converging uh, in that regard. Now, if price were to break the bottom, and then the, uh, this oscillator doesn't go lower than this bottom, then we would have divergence in D. Let's see. Any other questions? Yeah, how much is spike movement is expected during this year end. I'm not sure. We have some news events this week that could certainly be spiky. Um, the end of the year is usually slow movement, so not so much movement, but there will be always some movement. It's just less frequent and perhaps less 
less movement itself, like maybe 20, 30, 40 pips, but you wouldn't see, typically you wouldn't see hundreds of pips movement. Last year the yen, or two years ago, the yen did move quite a lot actually in the Christmas period, holiday period, but um, that uh, is more of an exception. If there's a particular pair that is prone to spikes more due to thinning of liquidity, I don't know. I never really pinched it because I'm not really trading that much during these holidays. I, that's something I didn't really pay attention to. But I, in general, you want to be careful and you want to be cautious in trading that these, these periods of time and realize that there could be some movement, but it will be on average less often and less, less movement in, in general. The indicator at the bottom, it's an awesome oscillator. It's definitely very similar to a MACD. It looks like a MACD. I'm not sure there's probably slight differences. I guess both are just as good. You go to Insert Indicators Bill Williams and then click on Awesome Oscillator. Let's see. Yesterday we had last question. Last, we had, uh, last yesterday we had a well edited wave webinar. Unfortunately, it was not possible to participate. Is it possible to see the webinar recording? Uh, you should be able to find it on YouTube channel. If you go to Admiral Market, go to YouTube, go to Admiral Markets, then it should be there, visible there. So if you would look at that, then it should be visible at uh, the YouTube channel. If not, let me know. All right, let me know and uh, I'll try to see why it's not been uploaded there or what's the uh, problem, okay? So let's continue dollar yen. Dollar yen is getting close to the 120 psychological level, so it does become a bit more worrying to trade it with the trend, especially if there's also a divergence here on the four hour chart. Theoretically, there could still be some small pushes up. Doesn't have to mean the end of it. I'm not going to trade those small pushes up, though. Uh, looking at the fact that price is still in a pretty big bullish price action, still an uptrend, uh, it doesn't have to mean that this is right now here the turning spot. It could be, though. So I'm going to keep an eye on how price reacts for our candlestick patterns to see how price responds to this resistance level. But otherwise, I'm a bit cautious with trading it both ways, in fact. Dollar Cat had a good breakout here. I hook back to in a bounce. But I wouldn't be surprised to see some zigzag. So if anything, I would say that the cat could strengthen still. But that's always a risky one. Right, because sometimes we don't get zigzags, but we just get this kind of retracement, but then you get still follow through. And that's always a bit of a risk uh, involved in, uh, in trading reversal zigzags. Nothing we can do about that. Having divergence helps for reversal zigzags, and we really don't have that. So in that regard, it wouldn't qualify. At this moment, I really don't see a lot of interesting setups, except the euro dollar, I guess. It's, it's again, <laughs> like yesterday. Um, the dollar cat seems to be in a tight spot. Dollar Swiss is two. Uh, the odd USD two, but it's kind of similar to the euro dollar. Uh, the dollar yen is reaching resistance. Kiwi is in downtrend, but it's also right at support. Your item pot we just discussed, in fact. And so, you know, looking at the traditional currency pairs, I don't see a ton of things that are really um, speaking to me as yet this morning. And yeah, that can happen sometimes. I don't know, sometimes you just see a couple, see a lot. Today, it's not that many. But you only need a one or two to, to still have a good day, so it's not that tragic. But um, the euro dollar looks to me like the best, like yesterday, in fact. We can take a look at euro cat again, indeed. So 
So we already had a volatile euro cat. Let's take a look at the daily chart. Yesterday, two days ago, we had a bearish candle. Yesterday was a doji. So we got to be careful as well, um, not to assume. Actually, it is now at that, that level that I expected to bounce. We got to be careful though, because daily chart is at a bearish in a bearish trend. And although that upside was very strong, we did stop at double top, of course. And one of the things that concerns me is that that bounce that we were expecting yesterday already happened. So the, the, the environment is a bit different. The envi why is the environment different? Does anyone have a guess maybe? What, 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 thing, what one thing is different? now compared to yesterday. Think about it, perhaps, and let me know if... Kalian says bearish flag. Any, any other guesses? Well, let me, let me, uh, Kalia says head and shoulders. Pista says below moving averages. So let me, let me uh, answer that question. Well, first of all, your, 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 your observations are, are good, and I totally agree, and I would have said the same thing. So those were definitely on my mind as well. It, it, it made a bounce but it looked very corrective, indeed, right? This bounce is corrective. Uh, it, it could be, uh, what kind of pattern it is, if difficult to say, it's, it could be a bear flag, I guess. It kind of looks a bit funky, to be honest, um, but it's some kind of correction. Then price also slowly but surely, because it went correction, the moving average has started to cross, and now it's kind of like in this downtrend, indeed. So that's a good point as well, so two good points. Other point that uh, I wanted to mention, the third one was the fact that uh, it's corrected here all the way back to the zero line. So when price made this fall, some kind of bounce was likely because of the AO. But the AO has gone back to the zero line now. So it's kind of made the bounce, and made the retracement. So that's a bit different because eventually here, the one bounce is possible, even though after that it's downside or upside, it doesn't matter. Those are kind of like these high probability spots that even if, what, regardless of the momentum, regardless of the trend, let's say, there are certain spots where certain circumstances make it a higher probability bounce, break, whatever. Your CAD had a bit of that feature, not the best one perhaps, but a bit of that probability bounce. Now, today it looks a bit different because it is, uh, because of those three things, I think. The AO is going back down, and correction and the moving average are lined up. Now, doesn't mean it cannot bounce, though, at the daily support to pivot point. It could. It's just that if I had to give a probability to this particular setup, it would be less than yesterday. Let's say the chance that it bounces is, I don't know, 50-50. And yesterday, maybe 65 or 60 or, uh, I don't know, it's difficult. It's just a random... A percentage, of course, but just to give you an idea what I mean with why perhaps today it's just a bit less appealing to trade the long off of support compared to, to yesterday, if you see what I mean. But it could still, it doesn't mean it cannot bounce, don't get me wrong. Because as yesterday, still valid, in favor of a bounce is this bullish candle, yes, definitely, weekly bullish candle, but it doesn't have to bounce here. It could really retest all the way to low. So in that regard, maybe waiting for the low, or closer to the low, the weekly low, could make sense. Let's investigate that idea. That would be definitely a reversal idea. It would definitely be on the daily chart, it would more be a candlestick trade setup of the weekly chart, and it would it would be a reversal trade, really. Yeah, 
Here there's some kind of support level in here that could provide guidance. And last but not least, we can put a fib from here to here. And you can see that the minus 618 target, when using, when using FIBS, is close to the daily S3 and that blue head and shoulders line at 140.19. So in that regard, waiting for this level now could make more sense probably. We could have a bit of a mini bounce at the minus 272 target. In fact, probably looking for shorts up in here for a move down to there could also make sense and then along from here to here. If you look at the probability tree, uh, and I know this sounds maybe funny to some of you, <laughs> apologies if that does sound funny, but if you look at the probability tree, then I would say that this seems most likely at this point. Now I could be totally wrong and that's okay if I'm wrong, but what kind of trades would most be interesting at this point? I would say the short from here and the long from here but not the long from here because the bounce seems limited at the pink magenta spot. Now you might think probability tree hogwash, that's fine if you believe that, that's, that I, don't, I don't mind that you have, they're fully right to, to, to say so. In any case, even if that is not true, the question is, is this uh, a high probability bouncing spot? I would say there's not enough confluence, and I would rather wait for a deeper minus 618 target. And if it doesn't get there, tough luck. Then I'd rather wait, if it doesn't get there, I'd rather wait for price to break above the daily weekly pivot point, get into a bullish trend, and then look for your longs. And wait for more confirmation. So basically, shorts in this zone, if you look at the trend and, and, and other factors, probably shorts more from this confluence. Longs upon the break and hook back, and longs from lower support. That's my two cents. What, what do you think? I'm curious if you, how, how if, if anyone um, agrees or disagrees by any chance, let me know. You can come back to your cat. In the meantime, let's take a look at some others. Pound New Zealand, I was looking for the break. Remember yesterday, remember? Let's take a look at that. Now, this particular candle is not a great breakout candle because it doesn't really go above the trend line. All right, so it did have a strong close. So some of you might have taken that one. It would have been too early for me, though. This one is better, or the retracement here. All right, this could be the trigger, and this could be the entry, or this could be the trigger and entry. There's some struggle though at this point. Let's see if there's any potential to stay in. Yeah, there, there, there could be a trail stop loss action here to go below the daily and this bottom. I don't think there's anything wrong with that to reduce the risk on this one. Now, regarding upside, I would say that's it at the moment. I wouldn't be looking to scale into the upside. But one could, of course, look for reversal trades if price gets higher specifically or lower. So I'm talking about shorts in this case. The shorting would have to be at a resistance spot or the, upon the break of support. So one thing we could do is put the FIB here and wait for price to get to the minus 618, which could be the reversal zone or if price fails and breaks below this trend line. So at this point, I wouldn't trade it. I would only trail stop the longs 
reduce risk, try to grab profit, of course, if it does move up, preferably at the minus 618, and maybe even look for a close in reverse, or close and enter a bit later to the downside. That would be the ideal scenario. So that's the pound New Zealand. Regarding the Eurocat, Kaylin is adding yesterday that he canceled the pendings by looking at Paris divergence, expecting that possibility. Okay, cool. Good, 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 yeah. Indeed, there is a very pretty strong momentum here as well, indeed. So before we maybe get the bigger bounce, we're going to need that divergence. Good point. Didn't talk about that, but that's a fourth thing as well. Any pair, does anyone have a pair in mind that they would look, like to look at? Because you will have to help me because I, I, at this point, I'm not too inspired in seeing a lot of setups. Uh, I have to admit, the pound New Zealand, but I mean, it's going to take a while before the pound New Zealand gets up to the minus 618 or breaks this trend line. Something to keep an eye on, though, I think. Yes, that's true, but it's not going to happen uh, within a few hours. Let me take a quick look where Camarilla levels are. Does anyone have a pair in mind? Or a particular strategy in mind. Let's let me scroll to a bit more exotics in the meantime. Let's take a look at the odd New Zealand, perhaps. I mean, that's not a pair we usually look at, so why not? Let's use our Camarilla template here. Got divergence between these bottoms. Okay. Point one. Uh, price is in a downtrend though. On the four hour clearly hourly two daily chart even daily chart is getting that as well. We are at a bouncing spot perhaps on the daily. Although it's an early call. Is there a divergence between these four bottoms? Let's take a look. I would say yes, but very slight. But yes, a bit yes. So divergence on the four-hour chart and the hourly. And as you can see, price has stayed below the 21 band for uh, quite a while. So what would be the trade setup? It could be along right now, right here. In fact, as a reversal trade, this is a, a high risk reversal setup. Off of the 50 fib, price is at the 50 fib right now. I mean, if one were a bit more riskier and dairy, then it could have been off the 78.6 fib. Advantage is it's extremely tight reward, uh, risk and a pretty hefty reward potential. Now, of course, price has already accelerated away closer to the 50 fib at this point. In fact, one might wonder if entry now does make sense. You could might as well wait maybe for a small pullback. So the idea would be, okay, price has stayed below the 21 band, and every time it went back to the band, it respected that level. But now, in this case, look at the difference. Price went into the band, moved away from it, but perhaps is moving up again. That could be a reversal signal. So one way to, to, to of course, various approaches. One could have been the entry here, right now, or at lower at the FIB. Or a third option is to look for a bullish candle here. If that is a bullish candle, it kind of signals that this downside was a retracement. And it could be a zigzag correction. Do you see what I mean? That candle, if it does close bullish, could either be taken upon the close or wait for a small pullback and then take the entry. Of course, there's a chance that one might miss the trade. Now, the target, the conservative target minus 272 target, the eventual target minus 618, the, the real target, even up to minus 1,000, which is the longer term moving average. Basically, what we're looking at as a reversal trade as you can see, press stayed above the 21 band. 
What we're looking at here is the potential for price to break above the 21 band and go up to, f to meet this longer term moving average and go into this space. That would be the fourth option. Actually literally waiting for price to get into that space and breaking this top. Now obviously the space in that above that top is smaller than the potential reward risk ratio when taking it right here or a bit lower. But that would be kind of the confirmation of the reversal trade if you see what I mean. Don't get me wrong, it's definitely once again emphasis, it's reversal reversal territory. But sometimes these work. Now when price does make the zigzag, of course this could be yet again a good reversal zone. I mean I should say bounce zone for downtrend continuation. When price gets into the target. Every time there is divergence on the four hour chart, and once again this divergence is a bit shaky, you can use this technique by fibbing the first zigzag and looking for a deep entry at the 61 or 78.6 fib and aiming for the minus 272 minus 618. Granted, not every one of these is going to work, but the reward to risk is very good. Is, is tremendous, right? So, especially off the 78.6 fib. So those those wins should compensate enough of those losses if done properly. But we need divergence. That's definitely we need four-hour divergence. Preferably, we also see a one-hour uh, kind of impulse, so that that could be the start of the zigzag. Preferably, we have some space here too that indicates that you know there's some space to to move up to that moving average. So that is a reversal strategy. In this case, we also have an extra benefit of a support trend line, but that's not a prerequisite. It's not a it's not a necessity. A prerequisite, prerequisite. <laughs> Difficult word for me, uh, but it's not a mandatory thing. It's, it does help, of course, as an extra. I think this is a strategy that uh, I bump into now, but I don't think we ever discussed something like this. Well, occasionally, but not that clearly. I think pound on, I remember a reversal trade setup, zigzag that went well. Does this make sense? Any questions about this reversal tactic? Let me take a look at the Europe Pound. Yeah, here's one of those doubtful cases. Did Europe Pound have Divergence or not. This is probably not, in fact, to be honest. But it was very close. But here, too, we had a potential zigzag. Right? Look at the deep retracement from the 78, even the 886 fib. It just didn't get to the target. So that's something we have to be aware of, is that sometimes they don't get to target. If you really want to be extra sure that price that you get out, at least part of the trade, you want to put a fib on the opposite side from here to here and exit at the opposite 78.6 fib. Now you're taking it from 78.6 to 78.6. So even if it becomes a triangle, you got the profit. Because not always will price go to target. Extra side note on this tactic. So Euro pound, let's take a look at the current situation. We had a bounce, oh, strong bounce here as a zigzag or triangle now perhaps at this moment. Price is trying to break through support.
Let's see, Kaylin is asking about the short to 7930. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, the thing is that price is already moving away from that zone. I'm not sure if price can get there today. And if it does, maybe the environment is a bit different in the meantime. Let's put a fib from. Let's try the fib strategy. We'll fib the uh, swing high, swing low from target to retrace from retracement to target. See a 61.8 fib here. First target is minus 272 target. So let's see. For our chart, I think it's there's plenty of potential here for price to make some some downside. But at the, let, let's look at the Camarilla, okay? But we're going to need a pullback, preferably a pullback. But I'm not sure if we can get to 79.30, but preferably probably a pullback to at least this trend line, 79.12 ish, 79.10 ish maybe. Could be sufficient space with the stop loss at 27 for that target down to 78.65. But it's, that's, it's, 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 it's a doable trade, I think. Something like that. But will it, will it do it? I don't know how, what, the, what the chances that price will indeed make this upside first. But it might just fall right to the target and not make a pullback. But if it does that, I don't know if it makes sense to jump in here so close to L5. As you know, typically I don't like to take a trade if it's past L4 on average for a breakout between intraday trading. So uh, that's why I would like to see price go back to L3. If it can get all the way up to H4, it seems tough to me at the moment. So yeah, this is basically uh, using the Camarilla levels and moving averages in combination with FIBs, right? Look for the FIB target. If you're trading FIBs themselves, of course, uh, in that regard, it uh, you would be looking for you know, reactions to FIBs, like maybe perhaps the 61.8 FIB here. If you're trading FIBs, you might want to, uh, by the way, you might want to decrease the number of moving averages or only use them on higher time frames. If, if you use, for instance, a daily chart for the trend, put the moving averages on the daily. But then on the four-hour chart, get rid of all of them, perhaps except one, and just use the FIBs in the direction of the daily trend on the four-hour chart. Or use the FIBs for the reversal technique that I just mentioned. Because otherwise, the problem is, is if you have FIBs and you have a lot of moving averages, you see that they're bullishly aligned, then it's difficult to take the short at the 61.8 FIB because it's against the tide. For some of you, that could be a problem. For others, maybe not because you're used to trading against the tide and it's not a big deal. For some of you, it could be a bit more difficult to take a trade like that. If you have problems with that, getting rid of the, the, the moving average or most of them, on the time frame that you're trading and only leaving them on the trend time frame could be a good solution. Ah, happy to hear that piece, piece that great stuff. Short term long, let's see, with longer term downtrend. Yeah, indeed. Great stuff. Happy that it helped. And yeah, you want to indeed uh, one more thing, we want to keep focused on, if, if it's a four-hour divergence, uh, you want to keep an eye on the four-hour leg. And let me, th let me say it this way, if, for instance, the hourly has divergence, uh, let me think for a second here. I think, let me say it this way, maybe the four-hour is a bit better for this. 
Maybe that's what I'm trying to say. Then the hourly, perhaps. The hourly could work too, but I would want to see a clear, very clear, clear impulse, first of all. And we need to see sufficient struggle here. That means like enough time in between these bottoms. More than, more than six candles. And at least one divergence, if not two on the hourly. So the hourly could be possible too, but I would be a bit more demanding maybe, say it this way. This is a 21 EMA, 21 EMA, with, which has basically a close, high, and low. That's what I call the band, indeed. Um, let's see, specific on entry and exit. On okay, the 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 entry at the very earliest, I would go for sixty one point eight. To be honest. Because if you go for 50 fib, it's sometimes price will not get that deep, perhaps, but most of the time it's a very deep retracement. I would count on a deep retracement. I wouldn't go higher than 61.8. 61.8 at minimum. But uh, the 78.6 is is just as good. So there are various options: a full entry at 61.8, a full entry at 78.6, or a split, 50-50 or 40-60 or whatever split one wants to do, or even a triple split, 61.8, 78, or 88.6 fib, or a double split between 78 and 88.6 fib. These are all combination possibilities. There's, there's no right or wrong, all, but it's a deep fib, let me say it this way. Uh, the other option is not choosing a fib and not putting a pending, but just waiting for price to hit the 78 and, and waiting to see if there's a candlestick pattern at, at the fit. The target could be split among the opposite 78.6 fib, like I did here with the euro pound. The opposite 78.6 fib or 88.6 or the minus 272 target or the minus 618 target. Here too, a split it's possible. A scale out is possible. So I'm sorry. Yeah, unfortunately, here are quite a lot of options, right? Perhaps, um, but this this really is possible to. It really depends on what you prefer. All of them are are just as valid options. If I had to choose, I would go for the 78.6 on average. And split the exit. Is my preferred setup. Uh, split the exit on opposite 78.6 fib and. Minus 272 target. Uh, yeah, Pisa, it's uh, close, high, and low. Indeed, close, high, and low. Of the 21 EMA, exactly. But 34 EMA is also very useful, I think. It's, it's probably very similar to 21 anyhow. Yeah, let's take a look at the euro dollar. No bounce at the L3. Okay, so that is more bearish than I thought. There's going to be some bounce. In this case, uh, well, maybe it doesn't have to be, by the way, but uh, in this case, I would ra rather wait still for the hook back to L3. You see, that would be, um, and this does not always work, don't get me wrong. It's not a fill, th fill, fill through, fill uh, proof idea. But if the L3 does break without any bounce, as I said, I would wait for a down bounce at the L3 and then break and put the entry below the L3 with the stop loss here and look for the L5 target, right? If that doesn't happen, 
then the alternative would be to wait for the L3 to become resistance and look for the bounce off L3. So we're looking for price action along the L3. That's basically what I'm trying to, uh, what I mean. And sometimes it doesn't happen. Um, but if you're using Camarilla, that's kind of what you have to wait for. Unless price makes the upside and you look for the, you know, the reaction, rejections here perhaps. Uh, yeah, if it doesn't react to the Camarilla, then unfortunately, what sometimes happens, then what can you do? Those that did take the position trade here had no reason to exit, by the way. I, I didn't mention it, but there's no reason to exit as yet and we, until we get to that until we get to that 120-250 at the very minimum, I would say. Of course, if you want to exit, I'm not, there's nothing wrong with grabbing profit as well, but uh, this morning there was no reason as yet here at least. Certainly not, because at max, some retracement, but it, uh, it was a good downside. So that was that was yesterday's trade was kind of like a, a swing. Could have been depending on how you treated yesterday, whether you exited at the end of the day. Of course, if you're an intraday trader, you would have exited at the end of the day, and you're looking to scale it or to to enter again. Sorry, uh, if you treat it as an intra, if you swing intra week, then you're still in it, and then you're looking for scale it. Uh, the scale in. Uh, that has not happened in my in my scenarios yet. Of course, there was the option I to to look for a, a bounce off to moving averages. The problem was that it was so early that uh, I don't tend to to take those that uh, that seriously. But it was a potential because it did make a small bear flag and bounced off of it. It happened before our trading room though, as well. So let's see if we get the bounce and hook back to L3. That's the moment the only thing that would work. The target is, it's a big hourly candle by the way. We'd like a pullback to the weekly daily S1 as well, which is roughly at the same as, as the L3. The target, let's take a look. Depends on which time frame you're looking for, but the 120.50 to 122.50 is a bigger long-term target. Now there could be some ups and downs before we get to that target. One could be 123, 122.75. So it depends on how fast you want to exit, but if you 123, 122.75 are, let's say, mini targets, in my opinion, until we get to bigger targets. Yeah, that's perfect. If, if you want to exit 123, it makes, makes sense. Definitely. It's just above the L5. Good stuff. Well, folks, uh, any, do you have any uh, other questions, perhaps, or uh, any particular pair? Let me know. Basically, we were kind of mixing the strategies today, so sorry if that seems confusing sometimes, but uh, it, it sometimes makes sense to, for instance, you know, you could, you can use these in tandem by finding the, the moments where certain strategies make more, more sense in a, in a way. Um, so by using Camarilla, trend lines, moving averages, fibs, divergence, you can kind of build a case uh, study for uh, you know, which strategy would, would work out. If price is heading back towards the fibs in, an, in a trend, you can look for pivot points, Camarilla to support FIB turning spots. If price is moving away from 
the trend, and I say in a trend, and it's continuing with the trend, you want to look for breakouts, right? So you can use trend lines as well, and can rely on moving averages for those breakouts, for instance. And then fibs wouldn't be so useful except for targets, right? So I hope it made, still made sense today. Um, the Oswesi, let's take a look at that. And in the meantime, Kaylian, thank you so much. Very much appreciated. Yet in a goal referendum, indeed, didn't uh, got rejected. And gold is, by the way, making a funny movement because it made a very strong downside off of that minus 618 target we talked about, right? But also at the same time said, well, who knows with the gold referendum, it could be a bit scary. Uh, and it didn't make that downside. And eventually, actually used the 78.6 fib, didn't it? Now, did we have divergence on the gold between the bottoms? No, we didn't. So this fib is not a, is not a reversal setup. Just to give you a clear example where you would not want to do it, even though it worked out by coincidence, strangely enough, but uh, it's a less likelihood than if there's divergence, so it should be skipped. So it was a bit funny. It could still be just a retracement for downside. Let's see, it's funny up and down. Uh, anyhow, out Swiss Frank. Let's do the first time with the blank view. What is price action telling us? We can just start with that, simply looking at the weekly chart. We see very simple that last week was a pretty bearish candle, in fact. That price is making lower lows and lower highs. So from this weekly chart, we can see that this is a downtrend. Price is broken through this line, for instance. Downtrend. <clears throat> Daily chart. We can put a fib from here to here, see if we hit the target. We're actually at the minus 618 target, which allows us to move the fib from here to here. That's the strategy. From retracement to target, to minus 618 target, like this. All right, what else can we say? Uh, it's having a bit of a struggle on the daily chart at that target, as you can see. There's some wicks here. So perhaps this is a rounding process for a bounce, but once again, it would be a reversal. So let's take a look at that, and investigate that a bit more on the four-hour chart. kind of awkwardly looking price action recently, to be honest, in the sense that this was up, down, such a big swings here. Not the typical uh, motion. Sometimes the charts can look very funny, can't they? Perhaps an inverted. We saw that in the daily chart, too. The four hours is, is looking a bit like that. So do we have some reversal potential? Let's see. Because at the moment, due to the target, the minus 618 target, due to the slowness of this price action, I would say that that could be an option. In this regard, let's check if we have divergence, first of all. Do we have divergence between these bottoms? Yes, we do, in fact. For our chart has divergence. Now, mind you that we had that here, too, already. So this is actually, if one would have put a fib on this swing high swing low, you could have seen that the bounce at the 78.6 worked, right? The price did stop at these fibs, but it didn't bounce high, in, high enough. Do you see that? So it, you have to be careful. This is not perfect. Of course, nothing is. Where did it turn? Let's put a fib from here to here. You see, it, didn't, it missed the 78.6, in fact. It went to the 61.8 of the opposite fib.
So that was a failed example, in fact. Now we have not only four hour divergence, but let's check the hourly, okay? Hourly chart does have a single divergence as well between these bottoms. And that's the difference between actually the fact maybe why this one failed was that there was no divergence on the hourly. You see, these bottoms were still convergent. There was four hour divergence, but not hourly. Now hour has divergence too, so it does become a bit better potential. Do we see is a clear impulse here? Uh, it's okay-ish, I would say. I've seen better, but it's okay. An 8.86 big bounce. So we're a bit late to the show, unfortunately, with the odds we see upside. Now it's a bit late. We could still wait for a hook back. Could be a reversal if price gets back into the 61.8 fib. It would be a reversal setup. If you're looking for with the trend setups, it would have to be downside. It would have to be either from these fibs, looking for some candlestick pattern from here, or well, that's yeah, that's probably the only thing at the moment. Or mm, don't know. Let me take a look. Let's see. For with the trend setups, we still have to be for reversals. We have to be cautious of this resistance line. By the way, that's why this spot is not so good because it's too close. We can also do the same for support. And if price pushes through that, there could be some intraday shorts down there. Better shorts could be from the targets here, or perhaps even at the trend line. So we're looking for decision spots. Those are the fibs, breakout or even trend lines. But considering the divergence on the one hour, four hour, I don't like the short from the trend line too much. I think it's too soon because of that. So if you put back the FIB, minus 618 target would be the best. That uh, lines up with the 50 fib as well, by the way, 83.10. So that's my two cents. I don't know if that uh, matches a bit what you were thinking about, Ilya, or, or did you see it totally different? Uh, let's see. Yesterday's webinar should be available through the YouTube. If you go to YouTube and I type and search or, or look for Apple Markets and look for their uh, channel, then you should be able to find 2nd of December, 2nd of December, webinar on waves, okay? If it do doesn't work out, let's say by next week, you don't see the wave webinar, please let me know, okay? Because then uh, we can take a look at it. So with that said, don't forget to join Nenet's webinar tonight. He's going to take a look at stop hunts. Tomorrow evening, Nenet and I have a webinar as well. We're going to take a look at the technical analysis. Yeah, you can see indeed what the other uh, participants are saying. You should be able to, to open up a chat. Sorry about that. A bit slow computer all of a sudden. Strange. Anyhow, um, yeah, you should be able to open up a chat. I think you can go to dashboard and then maybe click on questions. I'm not sure if that's the way. That's how I do it. I'm not sure if that's also for the audience like that. I'll show you where you can find the animal markets. Just go to YouTube. Uh, search for Admiral Markets, 
and then click the Admiral Markets Without Country, which is this one. Let's see what kind of webinars we have here. Weekly overview, Forex strategy from, I guess, a week ago, Pro Learning Lab, Live Trading Lab, a week ago. So it should be available here. Um, now, the weekly overview was something I did on Monday. So I guess hopefully today or tomorrow it should be uploaded, yesterday's webinar. Let me check. But if it's not, let's say it's not by Friday, just don't, don't hesitate to uh, drop me a note tomorrow evening, for instance, in the webinar or next week, Tuesday, and I'll get that sorted out, okay? So you just have to click on these uploads, click on uploads, and you'll see the whole list. All right, folks, well, thank you so much um, for joining us today. Wish you all a very good trading. Happy hunting and hope to see you in the webinar soon. Cheers.